Hello everybody and welcome once again to Novice to Legendary. In this series I talk about my journey as a beginning role player as I go from being a novice to legendary. Whatever that may happen to be. I guess we'll have to define what a legendary level role player is. But uh, in the meantime, let's just zoom back in on where we are now. So you've gone through first third, maybe fifth session or what have you, you've taken, you've, you know, you've become more involved in the group. You've take, been taking notes and everything like I've discussed in previous videos. And you now every session GM or DM ends things on some kind of a cliffhanger or, you know, the session wraps up and then you go on with life until the next session and you don't think anything about the coming set but about the coming game right not really uh you know if you want to get the most out of this first off you want to make sure you want to make sure that you do something proper with your hair before you record anything second of all there are some things you can do between sessions of the game to get the most out of the next, the coming session. Uh, the first thing is, you know, look over your character sheet. It's always a good idea. Help you brush up some more on some of your different spells and abilities. Because uh, it's always good to know those things beforehand. And also go over... Any kind of personality traits you have to fill out or whatever backstory you've written in, basically, you know, review not just your character's stats, but bits of their character, their personality, who they are, what they're doing, what they're actually ultimately trying to do out in the world. Because you know, by now you've got it where you've got some kind of backstory going and you have goals that you're pursuing. Not just the party's goals, but maybe some of your own that ideally will tie into the ultimate goal of the campaign somehow. As a little example, I've mentioned before how my character, the character in the campaign that I'm playing in right now, shares him. The uh, tiefling wizard who was raised by necrom a cult of necromancers. Again, that's a big part of his backstory is the fact that he at one point was a member of this, a member of this cult, even if he's just like an initiate. And, you know, he ran, he ran away after stealing a book that held a lot of important spells and rituals to the cult and had been on the run ever since trying to find some way to destroy this book. And heck, maybe one of these days I'll actually whip up a video where I'm just going over his backstory so you can get caught up and maybe even some a bit some bits on the other characters. So again, you can be caught up on that. So anyways, that is his goal. He is trying to keep this book from falling back into the hands of the this cult. Now, thankfully, the only thing he really has to do to achieve that, for the most part, is like a baseline minimum, is just keep the book out of their hands. Easy peasy, right? But there could be more to it. You know, he's wanting to somehow destroy the book or somehow negate the influence that it's had on some very important people in his life, like his adoptive father, which I mentioned in my video on taking notes. Which, again, is another thing that would be good to review between sessions. So, review your own character sheet to brush back up on what your character is capable is capable of and what they're doing, what their goals are, what they're trying to accomplish, and maybe come up with a few things to kind of move those forward in the next session. Conversely, look over your notes on the other characters in your party. And now you've probably gotten a little, hopefully you've gotten some information from them about what they're doing out in the world, why they're out adventuring, what their goals are. 
I start coming up with some ways to help one or two of them out. You know, help one or two of them further their goals during the coming session. And also, you know, review your notes on what happened so you can come up with some way to even maybe just move the story overall forward during the session. Now, granted, this is a game of group improvised storytelling, so you're probably not going to actually act on the plans that you've made, depending on what the DM or GM happens to have planned for the night, how everybody else rolls with it, or just how the rest of the story moves forward. And, you know, for a while, you know, that's perfectly fine. The important thing is, is that you're coming up with some things to do during your next session. So you're not just sitting there going, well, uh, now what? Maybe I'll just go and do something silly. Doing something silly is good up to a point, but you don't want to keep doing it because then you kind of become a one trick pony. Now, you know, some examples of some of these things that have come up in the sessions I've been playing in. Some of them have not necessarily been things that I have been doing as a character per se. But, you know, another bit of his background is he, well, not background, but throughout the course of the campaign, he has somehow died and come back as a vampire. And... While everybody else in the party has been kind of okay with it, you know, they've they, they've they've been just trying to roll with it and come up with some ways to help him deal with his thirst for blood, which has been caused some pretty pretty funny dis discussions. But there's one character in particular who has actually kind of taken upon himself to help Shirazim to reverse it, to find a cure for his vampirism. And the funny thing is, this other character, Alanon, is like this half-elf half uh, monk who happens to also be a member of the some kind of secret police force of the empire of the the empire that we're all wandering around in he's actually been doing more to find a cure for Shearsm's condition than Shearsm has been now on one hand that might seem like a bad thing you know some some bad role playing on my part but the thing is I and this other this player is playing this other character at the beginning of the you know at the beginning of the campaign we were both like very quiet and like off in the background in fact you know everybody was telling me repeatedly that they would just that they would go out of their way to try and draw more out of Shearsim. but it was like pulling teeth initially now part of that was because of things i've discussed in previous videos trying to get comfortable with the other rest of the group trying to figure out what my characters, you know, voice and personality would actually turn out to be, and eventually it became flesh it started fleshing itself out as the campaign rolled forward, and now they say that they can't get Shearsm to shut up, and that's a good thing. So anyways, while it would be normally be kind of bad form or whatever for me to not really try to drive forward Shearsm's goal of finding a cure for vampirism, you know, this other character is doing a lot of it for him and that is actually really good because not only do you want you to become more involved in the campaign and more involved in the game in general but you want but it's does it actually does everybody else a lot of good for everybody to become more involved somehow and that's where that you know taking note of different things that happen to other characters in the group and finding ways to help them solve their problems can be a good way for you to be, become more involved as well. And again, that's things you can think over, you can think over and plan on between sessions. 
And so, you know, that is, that's actually the bulk of what I wanted to cover today is just, you know, three things to do between sessions. They usually don't take very long. I mean, you've seen how copious my note taking is. So reviewing the notes is actually a pretty quick thing for me. The more time consuming one would be going through the character sheet because, because wizard, what more can I say about that? So if there's anything that I may have missed or any, well, these are the three points that I've thought of three things to do between sessions to become more involved in the game, to get more out of your role playing experience. What are some ideas? What are some ideas you have? What are some things you're doing between sessions to get more enjoyment out of your gaming sessions when they do come around? Please leave those in the comment section below. I mean, you know how that is. Comments are down there where everybody's always pointing in their videos. Otherwise, click like if you like this video. Subscribe if you really like this video and want to know when more videos are put out on this channel. And until next time, happy gaming.